Welcome back to the Whiskey Edition. I'm Rob, and today we're gonna do a few things because I haven't made a video in a while, and it may be a while before I do another one. I don't know, I've got a lot of plans, but can't quite keep the plans rolling. So first of the three things we're gonna do, it is the uh, 100th subscriber celebration. So we got that going for us, which is great. Appreciate everybody who signed up, like, comment, subscribe. I know we forget to say that, but you know, that's what happens when you, you know, you're a busy guy. So today I've got a little uh, local favorite in my glass. We'll be getting to that towards the end. The other thing I'm gonna do, as you can see behind me, there are a few boxes. So like, uh, Whiskey Row, I think, does a, kind of a haul. I've done a few hauls. I watched a Whiskey Mystery, brought back like 20 bottles from overseas. I don't know how he got all that in his luggage. This is uh, somewhat of a, uh, I don't know, it's maybe an addiction that I have, or a compulsion or something, I'm not sure what the right word is. But when I see something online that I've been looking for, I will tend to order it and then I tend to add a couple things because the shipping doesn't go up so I do that and then what happens behind me is a lot more bottles than I probably should be ordering. So I'll step through those real quick and then we'll get into the uh, the local picks that uh, Mark over at Northwest Bourbon kind of challenged everybody to do so I've got those at the end. But I've got one right here, it's very good and cheers. First box. Oh, and I got a couple other things I ordered too that are kind of whiskey related or I came back from travel with. So we'll start with the small box and I'll, I won't subject everybody to the opening. So I'll cut this out, but just to show that it, <laughs> I, for, <laughs> I have forgotten what's in each of these boxes to some degree, which is kind of bad in and of itself without looking at my phone. Um, I'll go through these. So, not fast forward, but probably a cut. Oh yeah, that's right. See, I knew I forgot. This one. Oh, jeez. Like I said, when you forget, <laughs> when you forget what you ordered. So a buddy of mine down in San Francisco, he uh, recommended the uh, lip service straight rye from uh, Savage Cook out of Viejo, California, and uh, distilled in Tennessee. So that's interesting. So that may be uh, that may be Dickel. I don't know, but he recommended it. I said I thought I'd pick it up. I saw it online, and it was a lot less than I've seen it here on the shelf plus no tax. And so there we go, it's kind of a cool bottle. So the lip service from Savage and Cook. And with that, what is this? Maybe this, I don't remember which one I saw first or last or, or whatever, but the Buffalo Trace Kosher rye recipe. So now another rye, it's gonna be a rye kind of day, I think. And so uh, uh, pick these two up. This was a uh, 329, so into March, April, quite a while ago. So can't wait to get into these two. Well, now I'm aggravated. <sighs> hey, look at this! Lip service from Savage and Cook. I apparently forgot that I had ordered this one, I think, when I ordered this that popped up. So now I've got uh, two bottles, so one can be a gift to my buddy down in San Francisco when he comes up to visit. So I guess it's a silver lining type of thing. So I had ordered, uh, I had forgotten, uh, obviously, that I had ordered this since it had been a while since I chatted with him. And um, this, I'm not even sure what it is.
Ransom Bourbon, produced and bottled by J. Henry Ransom. And uh, there must have been a reason why I got this, though I have no idea what it was. Maybe it was the price. Nope. Um, Willamette Valley, Oregon. I think it's because it's Oregon. I was looking for some Northwest bourbons. I believe that would be the reason why. I want to do kind of a Northwest thing with uh, the Pacific Northwest, north of Oregon. Oregon, maybe down into California a little bit and maybe put some Idaho in. So Ransom Bourbon. 44%, 88 proof, handcrafted in Sheridan, Oregon. So a lot of times it is tough to get local bourbons um, through mail order like this. So this, this worked out pretty good. There's that. The reason I had ordered all this stuff was because of what's in this guy. This proof and wood curated collection, Vertigo. 2021. Um, I've seen this around stores in the regular proof and wood, but not this uh, 2021 Vertigo. I read a little bit about it. Let's open it up. Read a little bit about it. Open it up. You see through bottles of lip service. Take that guy out. Has a nice. hanging tag and a kind of a satin uh, inside the box. Very interesting. It's a blended whiskey, 102.3 proof, only 700 milliliters, so that's kind of interesting. Got gypped and uh, comes in a cool box. So that'll go with the uh, what's in the box is in what's in the box. And this hanging tag, it's interesting. So this was the reason why I bought it the uh, lip service and the Oregon bourbon ransom were kind of the, uh, the side lights. So, yeah, all right, so we keep the receipts. Ah, uh, yeah, I do know. So, Jack Daniels Bonded Tennessee Whiskey. These are pretty new, I saw them pop up. Thought I better grab one. Well, I had a chance. Is it a 375? No, it's a 700. Huh, really interesting. I wonder why that is. Not 750s. Anyway, um, I thought I'd put this in the running with some of the other Jack Daniels I have uh, and give it a try. These days when these unique things pop up, jumping on them is tough. And uh, I, there may have been more of these in circulation than, than I thought. But um, I think I got two of them. I did get two of them for my buddy, who's also a Jack Daniels fan, so I can give him one. That's the kind of nice guy I am. Buying more liquor for everybody else than myself. And while I was at it, oh, this big honker. Oh yeah. I got this. Belfer bourbon whiskey finished with a Texas pecan wood. Look at that bottle. Art Deco to the max. I've got plans for this baby. Spirit of Champions. So I hadn't seen this. Yeah, maybe I'd seen it in one or two places around, but um, I thought this was uh, one of the good things to fill up the uh, order with the, uh, the two Jack Daniels. And look at that bottle, it's fantastic. And the last thing in here, which I've now forgot what it was. I think I know what it was, what it is. It's another big bottle. Yeah. I wanted to try this for a while. Prey Ranch. Farmers and Distillers. This is out of, uh, this is out of Fallon, Nevada. So, Pretty excited about this. This is a huge bottle, almost looks like a liter, but it just have, must just have a big bottle game because look at the, the bottom is gigantic. So very excited about this Frey Ranch. I actually thought this was, was, um, I actually thought this was going to be the one that the Balfour has with the uh, Texas pecan wood. I kind of got that mixed up. 
when I after I ordered it and you press the the go button and you're like Ooh, maybe that's not what I wanted but yeah so 45% 90 proof batch number four so pretty excited to try this and uh, I think there's some other Nevada let's get some bourbons try what's this is that a special gift let's see Boy, check your boxes, eat. Check your boxes because uh, sometimes there may be something else in there that. What's this? I don't know what it is. Ranch hand. So you add the Prairie Ranch bourbon, a little lemon juice. Oh, it's honey syrup and a dash of bitters. Collected from bees on Frey Ranch. Frey Ranch, yeah. So that's kind of cool. I didn't even know that was going to be in with this. Maybe I didn't read it close enough like I don't read most of these things close enough. So that's really cool that they included that in the, uh, in the order. Honey. That's everything. That's that. So what else? Oh, um, something that came. I think this came back. Where did I get this? Oh, a Glen Cairn I got in Pittsburgh from Big Springs. Big Spring Spirits, Bellefonte, Pennsylvania. I'm gonna try and pick up some stuff, some uh, some bourbons and whiskeys out of. Uh, out of Pittsburgh. I was back there for a meeting and didn't have a chance to uh, collect them and bring them back with me, so I'll have to figure out a way to do that. Uh, the other thing I got in the mail that's bourbon related, aged in ore, three ounce, max capacity, TSA approved flight glasses. So I picked up a set of these, a set for to go with this for my buddy, and uh, and you'll know why in a, hopefully in a future video of why I'm being so nice to them. So just let it go with that. So I picked up a, picked up three sets, need to have two, I guess, and or a gift and that. So let's, let's just open this up real quick so we can see what's going on inside. Because something tells me, I mean, the pictures online look fantastic, but you just never know till you get them. They came very quickly from H. Nor. I do not have a sponsorship with them. I don't have a sponsorship with anybody, even with 101 subscribers, which is just odd. So, the case is really nice. The bottles are fantastic. It comes with a pen and that little bag, so you can write on the side of the of the bottle. Here's the three ounce bottle. It's silicon wrapped, so it's got a nice wide mouth so you don't necessarily need a funnel to pour it into. Now, I bought the set of 30 or whatever on the Amazon uh, for the sample glasses and I think, you know, those are great for around town or whatever. If you're going to be doing any kind of flying or whatnot, having the ounces on the side of the bottle is probably helpful because, you know, the TSA people, if they see it, they may just go, there's no ounces on it. We don't know how much, so you have to get rid of it and that would suck big time if it was something really you've been looking forward to. So there's four, there we go, four per pouch. They were like, they were 30, 32, 30 some dollars. So uh, I think they were like 30, even though like 38. So uh, bought three of them and uh, get this stepped up. I wish it said TSA approved on it, but nice. People have said they're they haven't been had a hassle with them, and so got some nice uh, hanging things on there, and that way be able to uh, transport some samples back and forth from various uh, locales. Might even have to take them on my next trip because it was a pain in the neck to get to a liquor store, and and that's another good point. You know, you go to a liquor store and you can buy a you know a 
375 or you can buy the you know the small little airplane shooters you know but the cost per ounce is ex exorbitant and then you're limited to what they have on hand this way with with this you can bring a few of your favorite pours uh, to have in the evening and uh, not break the bank when you're when you're in that town so that's something to think about bottle flight that's what they call it oh back over here just today I picked up a bottle of high west campfire this is a somewhat of an elusive bottle up here in the Pacific Northwest it's out of Park City Utah um, I've heard it has a very smoky campfire like taste to it so I'm pretty excited to, to try this out I have some of the other high west products and uh, I can compare them with those and, and other smoky there we go other smoky kind of um, I don't think it's finished I think it's just the way it works out so be interesting to see how that plays out uh, pick this up I think I got this at, at the uh, liquor store you know in another part of the city and I always go in there it's kind of a museum they have everything priced anything of that's somewhat allocated or unique. It's really, really priced very high. Uh, sometimes though, you'll run into a uh, kind of a deal where they've got the bottle and taxes included, and it's far less than it normally would have been otherwise. And so I think this was like $30 all in. So when you see the red tag, I tend to pick one up, limited release, whatever that means. Um, I think it was for maybe, uh, wasn't it? National Women's Month or something, so got that going for us. Well, that's interesting. The, <laughs> the box is bigger than the bottle. They must have had to make the box a little bigger. So now we have another box. This, <sighs> this is one of those things, uh, the building the relationship thing. I put this on, I think, my picture on the Instagram, where you're building a relationship with a, whether it's a liquor store or just your local supermarket or whatever, and you're on a list and you say, hey, call me if, if you get something in that, you know, you think I might like or whatever. And they do, and you go down there and you don't ask the price, you just pay. Think, oh, that must be exciting. Jack 10, I put it on my list. She calls, she says, come down to get it. She rings it up and it's 200 bucks plus. And I'm like, oh, you do know how much that's going for everywhere else. So, <laughs> so I've got this, uh, bottle of Jack 10. So that's kind of the haul for the past couple months. A uh, couple fumbles here by getting two lip service. I um, have to I guess make a list of my own so I don't keep screwing up. But on to the local five favorites. And I'll put this one second to last or so because it is one of my favorites out of the local. Washington Crew. Behind me I have quite, not quite an extensive, but I got quite a few. I'm going to start with the, uh, start with what started this whole uh, whiskey thing for me, and that would be the sandstone. I think this is the, it's out of, uh, is this out of Tonino? Yeah, this is the sandstone out of Tonino, sandstone distillery. I got this during the pandemic when they were making uh, sanitizer. You've seen that on some of the other videos if you go that deep into them. And um, they wouldn't sell you the sanitizer, but they'd, they'd sell you the booze. So picked up picked up a bottle of sandstone whiskey. That's pretty good. Uh, probably my next favorite. It's kind of ubiquitous up here, the Woodenville. I don't know if you can call this local anymore. I mean, it's made in Woodenville but it's been bought up by a conglomerate, I think. I'll have to check that out. Uh, they do some neat things at the distillery. I got, uh, uh, I got the whiskey edition put on the box of the 100% uh, rye and it's hot. So we got that. I think after the Woodenville, I would say, well, let's go with a newer one. We'll put the two bar next. Went on a tour of the two bar facility down in uh, kind of the Soto area down south of the, uh, what 
uh, the two stadiums down there. This is a really good offering from them, straight bourbon whiskey, their version of bottled and bond. I, I'm guessing it's to the rules and regs of bottled and bond, so I would hope so. Um, it's, it's really good, 100 proof, it's a great sip. And I might have to put six in because, you know, that same day we did the, that same day we did the two bar tour, we did the, uh, the mischief over in uh, Fremont. And uh, we didn't really have a tour, which is kind of a bummer, but once they get going up again, we'll have a tour of the mischief facility. And uh, these are the storm tossed rise from the four ships. I gotta do a review on that. But, between this one, the Distillarium, that was on Mark's channel, on the uh, Northwest Bourbon channel, uh, and the Ula, it's a toss up. The distil Distillarium Triticale is almost like a, the finish is very close to something out of the, um, you know, those, not red, not kind of red hot, it's kind of a cinnamon finish if you really like a cinnamon finish but you don't like the upfront um, fireball sugary cinnamon taste that would be this it's really very interesting it's got a lot going on the, the triticale wheat rye hybrid is a unique grain from that they have a, uh, that they grow up here so between this and the cast strength ula the cast strength ula uh, which is what i am drinking tonight um, they're a close uh, four and five for me. Maybe, is that six? I forgot, maybe that was six. So, between these, um, if you can find this, you know the distillarium is kind of local up here and maybe a challenge to get, but uh, I thought it was pretty good. So, uh, quick wrap up, bunch of bottles in the hall to get through, do some videos on, some taste comparisons, um, and then the locals. Um, Mark was trying to figure out in his latest video of under $30, under $30 uh, whiskeys uh, that are local. That's a challenge because I think they have to make their, you know, they have to make enough money to sustain. And so the only way I think you can probably get under $30 is to buy, if you can find the onesies or the uh, airplane versions. These are uh, the Cocoa Bombs from Heritage. I haven't quite got to that point yet. Uh, doing, I was going to do a couple things with these, so I haven't gotten to them. But the uh, 750s, if you, or if you can find a 375, you may be able to find them for under $30. But mostly they're, I checked online today, and mostly they're in the 45 to 50 enough dollar range for kind of the local fare. So with that, I appreciate you watching this long. And uh, again, like, comment, subscribe. Again, thank you for the uh, 100 subscriber. And uh, I didn't pour a second glass, but and what do I always say? Pour a second glass, because you never know who's going to stop by. Cheers. <laughs>